Hello everyone. Good morning and happy Monday. Well, we have a very interesting topic to talk about today. We are going to talk about Ayurvedic diet. And Ayurvedic diet, we are going to be talking with Meredith, who is joining me from LA right now. She's an Ayurveda counselor who specializes in Ayurvedic diet. So hopefully she can join me today right now. There you are. Finally, we connect yes. with each other. <laughs> I'm super excited to see you. <laughs> Same here. I think there were just some glitches last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, so I was just telling our viewers, we are going to be talking about Ayurvedic diet and also the different six tastes that Ayurvedic diet has that. And uh, maybe we are talking with Meredith Klein. She's an Ayurvedic counselor. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit more uh, and then we can get started with the topic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm happy to be here with all of you this morning. Um, I um, am an Ayurvedic health counselor, as mentioned, and also um, one of the main channels of my work and the way that I like to express Ayurveda is through food. So in addition to working one-on-one -on -one and with groups of people, I also um, work a lot as a private chef here in LA and am wow. able to um, integrate the principles of Ayurvedic cooking into all of the food that I create. So it's really a fun life and I enjoy it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, I mean, private chef and all these cooking, I mean, amazing. I can only, I can taste the food right now. <laughs> so, so let's talk about how is Ayurvedic diet different than so many other things. So we'll start with the Ayurvedic diet on a whole level and then kind of go into the different six tastes and other things. So maybe you can just educate all of us. Why is that different than what we hear other things? Totally. So there's a lot of different lenses that we could use to answer that question. And I would first start off with the fact, you know, we're here on social media, we're living in the digital age. It's an age where there's so many fad diets, like anybody in their basement can just turn their camera on and suddenly create a diet. And yeah. the beautiful thing about Ayurvedic diet and what for me was first so compelling to bring me to Ayurveda was because we're talking about a science that is 5,000 years old. So there's, you know, it works. It's yeah. not just, you know, some fleeting idea that tomorrow will be replaced by something else. Yeah. So the way that a person's individual Ayurvedic diet looks is going to be, you know, different depending who that individual is. But yeah. a couple of things that we can say are kind of common across Ayurvedic diet. So first of all is that it's not just about what we put on the plate, but it's also the energy of what goes into preparing the food as well as our consciousness and state of mind when we're taking in the food. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of intention that goes into everything. And some other things that tend to be common across Ayurvedic diets, regardless of who you are or what your constitution is, yeah. is that we tend to favor foods that are cooked in some way over raw foods. Yeah. Um, there's some attention paid to the way that we combine foods, and I think we'll yeah. talk a little bit about that today. And yeah. then another real hallmark of Ayurvedic eating is that we try to incorporate in different ways the six tastes, which is really the topic <laughs> that we'll dive into today. That's right. So yes, yeah, so I uh, yeah, I think I think the personalization that Ayurveda does it, to your point, like based on your constitution, we've been talking about it in other uh, sessions on Vata Pita and Kapha. Each person is different and the diet accordingly. So it's very personalized way, right? That's the difference rather than oh, I start eating paleo and I start eating whatever X Y Z, and and that might I might not be the right person for that particular diet. So that's the personalization which you mentioned. And also um, cooked food versus the raw food, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's a huge thing. So let's dive into the six tastes now so we yeah. can and, and go from there. Sure. So um, let's just start off with what are the six tastes. Um, so yeah. I'll first say, you know, Ayurveda isn't the only system that recognizes tastes. You know, we grow yeah. up in the West, just having a basic understanding. Chinese medicine has yeah. five tastes. So the six tastes in Ayurveda are sweet, sour, salty, mm -hmm. bitter. Then we have pungent, which is heating or spicy. 
And the final taste is astringent. So astringent means drying. So if you've ever bit into like an unripe persimmon, pear, cherry, some kind of unripe fruit, and you get that like dry cotton mouth feeling in your mm -hmm. mouth, and mm -hmm. that's what we mean by astringency. So we don't have time to get like too far into yeah. like the deeper meaning of the six tastes today and how they play out. But Ayurveda recognizes that there are the tastes on our tongue. And then as the food is digested, the yeah. taste express in different ways in the digestive tract. So for today, yeah. I think the key takeaway is just when we're striving to have more of an Ayurvedic diet, to just make sure that you have good variety. Um, so not getting to, you know, we don't have to like count in the way that we count calories. We don't have to, you know, try to count percentages or things like that, mm -hmm. but more to strive to make sure that we're not just having mono diets that we're not eating the same things at every meal and that um you know that we're satisfied because the thing yeah. is that if we're just eating sweet and salty food yeah. which is what a lot of people in america are doing That's then right. when we um we constantly are having cravings. Our yeah. bodies and our brains are hardwired to taste these six flavors. So when we have that variety, we can actually find that we're eating less, we're feeling satisfied with, you know, simpler meals. So yeah, um, yeah so it makes a lot of sense. And what I think is really cool is that there's actually now modern research on the microbiome. And mm -hmm. we're actually finding that these six tastes actually nourish and feed and support different types of gut microbiota. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the things I love about Ayurveda is it mm -hmm. had this deep knowledge thousands and thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. and now modern science is finally catching up. And we're understanding mm -hmm. that this isn't just about enjoying our food, but it's also nourishing and satisfying these little critters that live in our gut that are responsible for so much of our well-being and health. No, no, I think, I think that makes sense. So maybe just for our viewers, um, like, uh, <clears throat> you know, you're absolutely right. Most of the times we are focusing more mainly on the salt and the sweet. Mm -hmm. And we don't know, I mean, even the viewers, we don't know how to incorporate the other taste in, in a healthy way. So, so maybe you can just talk about like a simple um, a meal, a one single meal that, you know, it's not typically Indian meal because that's very regional, you know, mm -hmm. Indian meal, all of the Indian meals have those Kali concept, you know, we have all these different little dishes that, you know, it has most of the taste that we're talking about, but to an American meal, what can we do here? Totally. So I think one of the easiest things to do and how I like to work with my clients, because it can sound really overwhelming because our initial thought is, oh my God, I have to cook like at least six different dishes and yeah. get all these different tastes. So the first thing is most foods inherently, or we can combine foods in ways that yeah. a certain dish has more than one taste. So mm -hmm. the second thing we can do is we can use condiments. So if you look at the Indian tali or like a Japanese bento box or yeah. all of the ways that cultures traditionally ate, they yeah. relied on small amounts of these condiments that you prepare a batch of, yeah. you have it for weeks and you just add that to the meal. So just a mm -hmm. simple thing people can do at home wherever you are is just like a grain and veggie and whatever protein bowl. So pretty much all grains have some degree of that astringent taste that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And some of them like rice um, bring in a little bit of the sweet flavor. So when we talk about sweet, we're not just talking about sugar and fruit. A lot of things like the grains and the winter squashes and root vegetables that are so mm -hmm. in season right now in the Northern mm -hmm. hemisphere all of these have that sweet taste. So we start with a layer of grains, two flavors right there in most cases. Then we can begin to bring in um, whatever roasted or sauteed veggies you like, and those are going to have different qualities. And then of course, when we add in leafy greens, pretty much all the leafy greens have the bitter flavor. So it doesn't have to be like these extreme, extreme bitters like horseradish yeah. or bitter melon, things like that. Mm -hmm. But we can um, bring those things in and then we can spice 
those vegetables in some way. So using some of the pungent spices, mm -hmm. the digestive spices, cumin, coriander, cinnamon, um, all of those things bring in a nice dose of pungency without, you know, leaving us sweating. <laughs> so right there, I think we're up to four or five tastes. If you have your greens, your grains, your roasted veggies, yeah. bring in whatever protein. If you're using um, non-animal proteins like mm -hmm. beans and legumes, those all are going to have more of that astringent flavor. Mm -hmm. And then we can top it off with, let's say, some fermented veggies. That's yeah. going to have some of the sour flavor. So that's one of my favorite ways to bring in the sour flavor. Fermented okay. veggies or squeeze some lime juice, some lemon juice, any kind of citrus over. Um, and then you could have, you know, some kind of sauce or something. One thing we also like to avoid in Ayurveda is having things be too dry. There should always be some kind of moist component. So we could use a pesto, a tahini hot sauce, something that has a little bit of moisture. And then right there, we have all the flavors. We have different textures. We have um, just a really satisfying experience visually as well because we see different colors. So this concept of variety we can strive for not only in flavor mm -hmm. but in all these other aspects of our food as well now that sounds good and what about the astringent taste uh, how do we bring the astringent taste to our meal we talked about the sour pungent and uh, mm -hmm. so right so again astringent we find in most grains and okay. then if you're okay. doing um beans legumes things like that yeah. and then also there's a whole family of vegetables that fall into the astringent category so these are the brassica vegetables it's the cabbage family so okay. in addition to cabbage cauliflower broccoli brussels sprouts etc that okay. whole family is a little bit more astringent got it got it and the sweets what do you recommend for sweets like should we eat a date uh, you know or we don't obviously go for cookies you know <laughs> yeah so again we can get the sweet food from or sorry the sweet taste from many grains yeah um, we can get it through most root vegetables especially the things that are a little bit more orange red in nature so got carrots it. things like that sweet potatoes yeah. of course um and then like the winter squashes um, so kabocha, butternut squash, all of those are inherently sweet. Um, but yes, you could, you know, incorporate um, some dates, things like that. I love to make chutneys that have um, yeah. either date syrup or maple syrup. Those are kind of my two preferred sweeteners. So if I'm not getting the sweet flavor just through the actual ingredients in the food, mm -hmm. if I'm making a sauce or something, I tend to go to those two flavors or those two ingredients. And yeah. that's a really nice natural source of sugars and sweetness without, you know, some of the side effects that white sugar can have. Yeah. So one more question now. Uh, so for breakfast, does Ayurveda talk about for each and every meal, like even for breakfast, we should have six days. So breakfast could be something simple. Uh, and then the lunch is more elaborate in the sense like what we're talking about the six days. Yeah, so I would definitely encourage people to think about this like across your day. So don't okay. get too, you know, caught up trying to have six tastes because, you know, the reality is that in the morning, a lot of us aren't ready to just hop out of bed and like down the yeah. flavor or but something like that. And all these sour going <laughs> yeah. <to the bottom>. <laughs> <laughs> so traditionally, um, Ayurveda is definitely um, favors having like a warm grain porridge or cereal. Okay something like that. So that inherently has some of the sweet flavor, some of the astringent flavor. We can of course add, you know, maybe some stewed apples. Um, and then we're adding spices. So um, cinnamon, cardamom, these warming spices. Yeah. So I would say the things to really favor in the morning are that sweet flavor in a healthy form. And then making sure you're having that pungent flavor. That's what for a lot of Americans is actually missing in the morning. And it's really important because we conceptualize our digestion as this fire. And so those pungent spices are like little bits of kindling that we are throwing onto the fire. So I definitely encourage you, if you've got like the sweet part down for your morning routine, start bringing in more of the pungent because that sets up your digestion for the rest of the day. And mm -hmm. then of course, as we go into lunch and dinner, 
we can bring in more of the bitter flavor, more of the sour flavor. We mm -hmm. might also start the day with something like hot lemon water, which of course has a little bit of sour. So don't That's be- fun to, Sour and pungent, yeah. Yeah, so don't get too focused on every meal. I must have everything. <laughs> okay. But again, variety is key and spread it out through the day. So you can kind of look across the day and say, did I have bitter? Did I have pungent, et cetera? And got you'll it. be well on your way. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. And and the uh, intermit uh, so intermittent fasting is that also part of uh, what the Ayurveda talks about? Uh, you know, I, I know a little bit off the subject. We're talking mainly on the six taste. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting is that like so many things in the West, we yeah. come up with these things and we act <laughs> like they're brand new and like we turn to Ayurveda and people have been doing them for five thousand years. So. That's right. Ayurveda didn't necessarily, you won't find the term intermittent fasting in any yeah. of the texts, yeah. but the concept was always present. So the idea is that we have a dedicated period where we're not eating. So typically this would be from the time that the sun goes down to breakfast the next morning. So people who are following that kind of schedule are by necessity having that 12 to say 16 hour period that we're not eating. So, um, you know, it, it's not news to Ayurveda that intermittent yeah. fasting would have benefits and just that, you know, even if we're not doing a full 16 hour um, break from food, it's important to have times that we're not just taking in and taxing the digestion and allowing the, you know, important mm -hmm. processes that happen at night um, with the liver and all of our kind of, you know, I call them like the janitors of the body. We have to <laughs> let those night janitors come out and do their work. So if we're yeah. snacking a lot before bed or, yeah. you know, we've just eaten so much throughout the day that our digestion has constantly been working, 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 then yeah. the body really doesn't get a break. So we just tend to have less energy. So it makes a lot of sense from an energetic perspective that intermittent fasting would be of benefit um, as well as for digestion and just overall well-being. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that makes sense. And uh, and I just want to add Ayurveda has this uh, cleansing, right? The, the concept of cleansing, uh, you know, which is a huge topic on panchakarma and all that stuff as a daily regimen, right? As a, what they call it is a dinacharya. So, so right. that, you know, they, like you said, you know, it has a, inbuilt system on a daily basis like machinery and you know built into it so that you can function uh, you know with a exactly. healthy way. Yeah, yeah. So when we're following that, again, everything in Ayurveda is stemming from the rhythms of nature. So, yeah. you know, yeah. nature kind of is on its own intermittent fasting schedule in terms yeah. of there's not a lot of activity. Animals have their downtime. So we're wired to do that as well. So um, it's certainly not surprising. And as you say, like, there's a cleansing aspect to this. So we need to give our body that time for that night janitor to come out and do that work. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, thank you so much. I think I think this is an amazing session. Just a basic 101. That's what I would call it for us to function, you know, like incorporating the six days as Meredith is talking about, have the janitors come at night to cleanse yourself, you know, and, and, and mindfulness, right? We, we didn't talk about then, you know, when you're eating, right, have the mindfulness is also very important. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's one thing to have the food on your plate and have the taste, but yeah. if you're not actually taking the time to enjoy and notice, if you're so distracted and suddenly you look down and it's like, where did the food go? Part yeah. of what we need to really have that satisfaction is for the brain to register, oh, now I'm having something sour, now I'm having something yeah. sweet. So yes, mindfulness is a huge part of this for sure. Any questions, any feedback? I, I see some questions going back and forth. Someone was saying, add me, please. Well, you, you, you are added. That's why you're seeing this video. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, someone is talking about the weight loss. I think this is just an introduction. If you have more topics, we can, you know, we can talk about weight loss in a separate session. Um, yeah, so uh, anything else? And if anyone has, um, you are welcome to reach out to us. Um, and uh, we will be coming back with another session with Meredith. Uh, I think next week or one of these days soon. We'll find a time. Yeah. We'll find a time. <laughs> yeah. um, 
<laughs> thank you so much uh, meredith for joining me today and um, really appreciate you joining me and uh, you know we all will follow the schedule what you're suggesting anything else you want to add before i wrap up the session today um just have fun with these flavors don't be too stressed so having okay. a lot of stress about trying to do anything right can be counter to whatever it is we're trying to get right so um it doesn't have to be perfect ayurveda is an incremental science so the more you do the more you get um but doing 50% or 70% is better than nothing so don't get too stressed <laughs> amazing amazing yeah and spice is variety of life right add spice Absolutely. to your life you know yeah. <laughs> can it'd never be, go wrong <laughs> it'll be interesting it'll be interesting and cool and more taste and add spices that's the exactly. one and mindfulness that's what Meredith is talking about yep <laughs> all good medicine <laughs> so I'm careful well thank you so much for having me it was great to be here with you absolutely and laugh that's yes. <laughs> so important it's so important too and that's why we try to make jokes you know and we i mean just have a good time and thank you so much yeah. Meredith <laughs> you're welcome enjoy the rest of your day yes thank you <laughs> bye bye bye